Starting with the cinnamon crumb, you'll need one cup of packed brown sugar, three tablespoons of melted butter, one tablespoon of cinnamon, and two tablespoons of flour. Line a baking sheet with parchment paper and then mix together all of the ingredients in a little bowl. Spread that mixture onto the parchment paper, pack it down, and freeze for 30 minutes. For the batter, you'll need three and a fourth cup of flour, two and a half teaspoons of baking powder, a half teaspoon of baking soda, one half teaspoon of salt, one and one fourth cup buttermilk, one cup sugar, a half cup of melted butter, two eggs, one fourth cup sour cream, one fourth cup oil, and one tablespoon vanilla. This recipe makes 18 to 24 muffins. I made 14 and filled a mini loaf pan with the rest of the batter. First, we'll combine all the dry ingredients together in a medium bowl. Then in a large bowl, whisk together the buttermilk, sugar, melted butter, eggs, sour cream, oil, and vanilla. Pour the dry ingredients into the wet ingredients and whisk until mostly combined. Remove the cinnamon crumb from the freezer and break it into tiny crumbs and then fold into the batter with a spatula. muffin liners three-fourths of the way with the batter and bake at 425 for eight minutes then reduce the heat to 350 and bake for another 10 to 18 minutes until a toothpick comes out clean for the glaze you'll need three ounces of softened cream cheese a third cup of powdered sugar three-fourths teaspoon of vanilla and a couple tablespoons of milk for this you're just gonna mix together the cream cheese and powdered sugar and then whisk in the vanilla and milk until you reach your desired consistency once your muffins are done and out of the oven, let them cool for 10 minutes in the pan, then transfer to a wire rack to finish cooling. Finish them off with a dunk into the glaze and there you have it. For this recipe, I cooked the sweet potatoes and bacon ahead of time so that by the time the morning rolled around, it would be a lot quicker to throw together. And for this one, we're just gonna measure with our heart. First, we wanna make sweet potato hash browns, so cook them over medium heat with a drizzle of olive oil. Stir sparingly so that the sweet potatoes get a nice crust on the bottom. Add your pre-cooked bacon and a handful of spinach. Then push everything to the sides of the skillet and crack an egg into the center. Once I add the egg, I turn the heat to low and cover with a lid so that the egg stays soft. Top it off with some salt and pepper, and you're done. It's that easy. This is my mom's recipe. You'll need two and one fourth cups flour, one fourth cup of packed brown sugar, two teaspoons of baking powder, one half teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice, one teaspoon cinnamon, one fourth teaspoon of salt, one fourth teaspoon baking soda, one half cup of cold cubed butter, one egg, a half cup of canned pumpkin, and one third cup milk. These are very simple to make. First, mix together all of your dry ingredients in a large bowl. small bowl, whisk together the egg, milk, and pumpkin. Cut the butter into the flour mixture with a pastry blender if you have one, or just a fork and knife. Pour the pumpkin mixture over the dry ingredients and stir until it begins to form a dough. Then flour a countertop and knead the dough approximately 10 times. Dust the top of the dough and press into an 8 inch circle. Then cut into 8 equal wedges and place on a baking sheet lined with parchment paper. Bake at 400 degrees for 12 to 15 minutes until they're lightly golden brown on the bottom. And while those are in the oven, we're going to whip together a really quick frosting with some melted butter, powdered sugar, vanilla, and milk. Frost them while they're still warm and enjoy. is actually very easy to make. You'll need three cups of old-fashioned oats, one cup of nuts, I used a mixture of pecans and walnuts, one fourth cup of maple syrup, one fourth cup of packed brown sugar, three fourths teaspoon of cinnamon, one and a half teaspoons of vanilla, a half teaspoon of salt, and a third cup of melted coconut oil. Line a baking sheet with parchment paper, then in a large bowl combine all of the ingredients except the nuts. You'll see here that I did add the nuts, but they burned a little bit, so I've since tweaked the recipe. Pour the granola out evenly onto the baking sheet and press down with the back of a spatula. This is going to bake at 350 for a total of 25 minutes, but halfway through we're going to rotate the pan and add the nuts. Let it cool completely before breaking the granola into clusters. And this can be stored in an airtight container at room temperature for up to four weeks. 